Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Liar. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. I stick my finger inside the tip to skip uh, inside and tip the skin to the side. I bring the tip of my finger to my mouth and taste it. It's definitely water and it's cold, too. I put the opening to my mouth and begin to guzzle down the contents. It's like drinking the water from a melted glacier, more fresh than anything I've ever had over the past month. I pull the skin away from my mouth, gasping for breath, the crisp air tickling the inside of my mouth. Looking around I, while I quench my thirst, I notice a specific thing among the camp supplies strewn about. There's a clothing line stretched from the top of the small cliff all the way down to the same tree the horse is hitched to. A pair of trousers and white tee and white shirt hang from this line, along with a towel and even a pair of undergarments. Those clothes are definitely Lyle's. I've seen him in that shirt on multiple occasions. In between the clothing, there's a lantern with a blue flame dancing on its candle. Vitality fire. I assume it's there to keep the drying clothes from freezing stiff, but as I look around, I notice there's no frost on any of the grass around it. It's like I'm nestled in a small circle of the forest that's unaffected by the frigid weather around it. I look to my left and see a small cloth with small red berries nestled in it, along with a large green apple. I'm not terribly hungry at the moment, but I sense that it will change soon. I decide to take a few berries, examining them first. They're wintergreen berries. The kind I used to eat as a kid. I pop a few in my mouth and the flavor is stiff as stiff at first. After chewing for a moment, the taste becomes a bit stronger and my tongue relaxes into it. Out of the corner of my eye, I spot a book left open on the base of the bedroll. I'm about to reach for it, but I hear a noise in the distance. The noise of rustling bushes echoes through the fog along with the sound of twigs snapping. It could be a small animal, but as the sound draws nearer, I'm convinced it's much larger than a squirrel or hare. From out of the fog, I see a pair of tall, pointy ears peek out from behind a large bush. The wolf steps over the snow sh snowy shrubbery, a bow slung over his shoulder with a pail of water in one hand and an expired turkey in the other. Our eyes meet and the world freezes. Leuven, you're awake! He sets the pail and the turkey on the ground and rushes over to me. Before I can say anything, I'm pulled into a tight hug as he carefully kneels down at my side. Ow! Oh, sorry. He pulls away from the hug and rests his large paws on my shoulders. Are you okay? How long have you been awake? Do you need some water? One question at a time, please. He lunges at me again and starts to plant kisses all over my face. I'm pushed back onto the bedroll and pinned down by his weight. His cape blankets over us as he continues to smother me in affection. He ends it with a deep kiss on the lips, pulling away and rolling over onto the ground next to me. His armor makes it a bit hard for him to move around, but he eventually situates himself. I struggle to roll over and look at him, my body still somewhat sore. Still, even with that, I feel completely rejuvenated, rejuvenated after what just happened. I've been waiting for you to wake up for what feels like ages. It's been a week since we escaped. He pants, clearly out of breath, puffs of hot air forming clouds around his muzzle. I remember everything now. I thought I was done for, but there you were. Swooping in to save me at the last second. How did you do it? I took the place of the headsman. How the hell did you pull that off? He sits up, leaning against one of the rocks behind us. Hmm. I snuck into the stables and found the headsman. Once there, I thought it was caught and done for, but he actually ended up helping me. Really? Yes, he gave me this his great axe and retrieved my horse for me. I'm sure he's okay, because he can't really be punished for being robbed. He must have been very fond of you. Lyle chuckles to himself, that soft laugh almost as warm as the fire. It's also confusing, though. Why would the headsman help Lyle save me from execution? I was under the assumption that the headsman would carry out his orders no matter what. Why would he help you save me? It's funny, really. He said he had received a vision. A vision? He's a very holy man, as I'm sure you know. Yes, I'm aware. This vision told him that if I came down to the stables on the day of your execution, he was to help me. God must really love you. Yeah, that's what Tigran did. They somehow managed to twist the events into playing out in our favor. They're not supposed to do that, though. I guess so. What happens to Tigran? What happened to Tigran? The headsman said that you were of great importance. What does this mean? I didn't want to question it, though. I saw the chance and I took it. I didn't really have another choice. Tigran saved me, but what did it cost them? Clearly it was something big. What if our connection got worse? A flurry of thoughts and worries run through my mind, the chilling breeze not making things any better. Leuven! Gah! I said, do you know what the headsman was on about? Oh! I try to formulate a careful reply, but I feel stuck. I want to tell him what it truly means. 
I want to open up and come forward about all of it. Tygon clearly trusts him enough to center my entire escape around him, but I can't. I'm not sure. At least not right now. I'll tell him later tonight. I can't keep it from him forever, especially him. Well, I certainly owe him one. I don't think I'll get the chance to make good on that, though. After I rescued you, I got us out of there as fast as I could. We took the main road for a while, but then I changed our course further north. It took a day's ride, but we're far away from the capital city now. I even managed to snow on the way here, so no chance of hoofprints being left behind. And where is here? We're just half a day's ride north of Hailing Cove, in the woods at the base of the mountains. It's not the middle of nowhere, but we should be safe here for a while. I even went to one of the markets in Hailing Cove to pick up some supplies. Wasn't that risky? I'm pretty sure we're wanted all over. News about our crimes hadn't made it to Hailing Cove yet. Also, I made sure to hide my identity and didn't stay long. I would hope not. I hate to be left here alone for too long. Even if I was out for it. Don't worry. You were safe here. I wasn't, gonna, I wasn't gone long and made sure everything was secure before I left. Besides, the huntsmen make sure there aren't any many predators in these forests. Ugh. Calm down, I was only joking. I'd rather be left here than go into town and face getting recognized. I'm sure your wanted poster is very handsome. It better be. When I was there, I picked up plenty of things that will help us. With what? What do you think? Being out here in the wilderness. We can't just rent a room at a tavern. Fair. I had plenty of gold set aside and managed to snatch it before I escaped. We've got plenty of food and supplies to start us out. That's very good to hear. The idea that we won't be, that we won't be starving certainly makes me feel better. Not only that, but my face feels fresh and my hair feels much cleaner than it was in the dun dungeons. Were you washing my hair? Yeah. He stands up, throwing his cape back. Didn't want you to wake up feeling like you were still in a dungeon. I truly don't deserve him. As a friend and a lover. Watching him get up, I managed to get a good look at his armor. It's studded leather with chainmail, woven imagery adorning the leather padding. On his gauntlet and pauldron, the family crest of the reeds is painted. New armor? Old, actually. My, mother, my other set of armor was more ceremonial. I wouldn't be caught dead wearing it on the battlefield. It looks nice on you. I love the chaps. I... Thank you. I do too. Much more comfortable than that full body gambeson. And that must be your horse over there. That's him. The horse calmly rests by the tree he's hitched to. His black coat shines like coal, contrasted against the water for the snowfall. He has a long, curly white mane which rests on his thick neck and down his back in thick ringlets. Above all that, he's huge. He's beautiful. One of the prettiest horses I've ever seen. His name's Finley. He was given to me when I was knighted. Rainer knew I would need a horse big enough to carry all this. He gestures to himself, closing his eyes with a humble expression. Well, he's as big as I remember him being when you galloped over the fields outside of... My mind goes back to that day and I'm almost able to see it a bit more clearly. All the bad memories seem to overpower the stunning visual of Lyle riding over the hills. The worst memories. Are you okay? I... No? The dry wounds on my back feel more noticeable and I readjust my shirt. What happened after the trial? What did he do to you? The question causes me to wince. It's a question I was hoping to avoid, but he seems to have figured out something's happened. That much is true. I think you know. He looks hurt. He was just punched in the gut, but then requests again with a bit of impatience. My mind is coming to many conclusions, but no. I don't know. I want to know. I was tortured. How? He takes no time to register this information, as if he already knew what I was going to say. I... My voice catches in my throat, but it feels more like I'm about to throw up. Thinking back on it, my muscles in my body begin to tense. Hmm. Okay. I can imagine every bone in my body aching like they did those many days ago. Please don't make me talk about it. Leuven, I won't force you to talk about it, but I need to know what happened. Please, if you could just... The desperation in his voice bleeds out more and more with each word. I need to know, because I never forgive myself if I wasn't able to give you support. He approaches me slightly, but I back away from him. This causes him to take a step back, his feet crunching the stiff grass. Please. I just want to... Can I just... show you? He bites his lip at hearing this, eyes darting all over me. Show me? I pull my legs out from the bedroll and sit on top of it. 
The leathery surface is stiff and cold on the outside, but it feels almost refreshing. I was secretly hoping you just already knew. One less problem to bring up. I shift around on my knees and face away from him. Reaching down, I slowly pull up my shirt from the bottom and over my head. My hair falls down around my shoulders, spilling down onto my upper back and brushing against the scars. I don't have a reason for it, but I'm not, but I'm overwhelmed with embarrassment and my face becoming hot. At first I hear nothing from Lyle, with having him somewhat of a delayed reaction. He lets out a choking gasp, like he's at a loss for words. Tears begin, begin welling up in the corners of my eyes, so heavy that when I blink they fall straight down rather than streaming down my cheeks. I hear him stumble forward, drawing in a sharp breath before belting out a stream of sobs. No! Why did- Every word after that falls from his mouth in some form of gibberish. He then throws out a string of swears, some sound like they're in a different language. It's a thick and heavy language, one I've only ever heard from travelers who get too drunk at the local tavern. It's not as bad as it looks. I can barely feel it anymore. He continues to sob, now taking his large paws and gently examining the area. How could he? It's like Leif said. Every word uttered comes out in a shaky voice. Human wounds heal pretty fast. The tears aren't flowing any faster, but the muscles in my face begin to tense and I start to grit my teeth. The pads on his gentle fingers brush over the branding scar, sending a shiver throughout my whole body. What else did he do? The voice I hear almost doesn't sound like Lyle at all. Gave me a hallucinogen. He pulls his hands away and I turn around and I turn around, bringing my arms together and holding them tight against his tight against my body. Lyle's standing, pacing around the area, running his paws over his head, his ears being pushed back each time. He starts breathing rapidly. Each breath drawn into his body makes him inflate with rage. I swore I wouldn't let him hurt you! I... He's going to pay! He's going to pay for this! Fuck! He throws his paws down around his waist and then quickly brings them back up, wringing them in the air. I've never seen him so furious. The whites of his eyes turn to a dark yellow. If I blinked, I, li I most likely would have missed it happening. I swear I'll fucking kill him! I I'll... I'll... Lyle falls to his knees in front of me, his armor clattering as he does. His face is tensing up, the muscles in his nose pulling his chops back, his eyes twitching. I watch him in a dazed state, the tears no longer rushing down my cheeks. Eyes wide, mouth dry. All I can do is sit there and watch him crumble to the ground. In that moment, he looked as if he had already killed Adrius. I shift in my seated position and move forward, falling into him. I wrap my arms around him and press my body into his. The cold, steel parts of his armor shocks me for a moment, but I don't pull away. After hugging for a bit, he begins to calm down, as his breathing steadies. He gently wraps his arms around me and buries his nose into my hair. We just sit there for a moment, rocking side to side ever so slightly. He manages to smell as he always did. Sweet coconut, like the warm mines on the beaches of Aaron. I'm so sorry. I adjust my arm and pat him on the back. His cape is rough and sturdy, made of thick fabric, which is much different from the old one. Don't be. After a couple minutes of silence, Lyle mumbles into my ear. Can I bandage you? The wounds look pretty healed, but I want to make sure they're protected. Sure. Lyle sits up and takes a deep breath. He then crawls over to a large rucksack and rifles through it. I wish I knew you had those scars. You were so weak when I took you off my horse. I was afraid if I touched you too much. He pulls out a cloth and a roll of bandages. Turn around, please. I do as he says, sitting cross-legged on the bedroll. I take a deep breath, trying to calm myself down. I just feel so... broken. I'm not able to process my emotions properly right now. Lau dips the rag into the pail, water dripping off onto the ground as he brings it over. Tell me if it hurts and I'll stop. I'll be fine. He presses the rag onto my back, gently dabbing it onto the scars. You can go a bit harder, if you need to. All right, y'all, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Terezum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye